we hear a lot of discussion about the youth bulge. It came up a lot in the, in the Arab Spring in the Middle East. Um, we hear it about uh, as a possible contributor to unemployment rates in Sub-Saharan Africa and other regions. Um, people mean different things by the youth bulge. Uh, one of the things we might mean is just a concentration of the population in the youth ages or youth as a high proportion of the working age population. And uh, a number of countries do have fairly high ratios measured by that. We might also mean just the growth rate of the youth uh, population. Um, we've done a lot of work to try to look to see whether there is a relationship between uh, these youth bulges and youth unemployment. And one of the first points we make is that these uh, youth as a, as a fraction of the working age population, to take that measure, that's a common measure of the youth bulge, uh, is actually much lower in most developing countries today than it was uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago. So if you look at countries like Brazil or Thailand, uh, most Latin American countries, most, uh, most Southeast Asian countries, uh, they have relatively low fractions of the youth as a, as a fraction of the total population or the working age population. And that's because of the rapid fertility decline that uh, those countries have seen. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, on the other hand, continues to have a pretty high fraction of the uh, population concentrated in the youth ages, and the youth population is still uh, growing pretty fast. Um, but even in Sub-Saharan Africa, the growth rate of the youth population, if you said, uh, what's the annual growth rate of the number of 15 to 24 year olds, for example. That's lower today than it was 10 or 20 years ago. So uh, pressures are easing off uh, in, in some sense. What we've done in our work is to try to look to see whether there actually is a relationship between measures of the youth population and youth unemployment. So we use the International Labor Organization's measures of youth unemployment for as many countries as we can find. We look at the United Nations Population Division's estimates of population just to construct simple measures of youth population. And if you look across countries, the relationship is actually goes the wrong way in the sense that while we would think that high uh, youth populations would lead to higher unemployment, if you just look across countries, it actually is the opposite. Um, that's not necessarily very interesting. It may be misleading uh, because basically what is the case is that Sub-Saharan Africa actually has fairly low youth unemployment as conventionally measured. Um, that's because most people are in agriculture. They don't describe themselves as being unemployed even though they may be underemployed. Um, where we see high youth unemployment rates are in Europe, places like that, that actually have very small youth uh, proportion of the, of the labor force. So when you look across countries, the relationship actually kind of looks opposite of what might be predicted. The next thing to do might be to look at, we'll look at changes over time. Where countries that have had faster rate of growth of their youth population, have they had uh, bigger increases in unemployment? And that actually goes the wrong way as well. Um, but may also continue to be uh, a bit misleading in terms of what's really going on uh, in the fundamental relationship between youth demography and unemployment. And it does look like that the rapid growth of the youth population does put pressure uh, on employment. And from an economic point of view, we think it makes sense that it's this growth rate that really creates the problems for the labor force more than just the overall proportion of the labor force. So if you have a high proportion of youth in the labor force, but it stays that way for a while, the economy can adjust. But if you have an extra million people entering the labor force every year, that's, that's a lot to ask of an economy. And we estimated using the UN's population estimates that if Sub-Saharan Africa were to just keep employment constant, keep the percentage of the population employed uh, constant, um, it would need to add 1.6 million jobs per month in the period 2025 to 2030. Um, so that's a big challenge. Uh, and uh, of course, most of those people are already born. So even 
even if fertility rates fall in Africa rapidly over the next decade or so, it's not going to affect those, those numbers. So it's pretty easy to project out for the next 15 to 20 years what the, what's going to happen to the youth labor force. And it's continue to, going to continue to grow in sub-Saharan Africa, and it's going to grow at those kind of numbers of needing something like 1.6 million jobs per month just to keep the employment rate at its current levels. We think it's interesting to look at these relationships between uh, population and poverty and unemployment in general, but uh, uh, this age structure component of it, because it is one of the dimensions in which you really see uh, the, the differential impact of, uh, or the impact of the differential fertility declines that these regions uh, have had. And we think we can see some evidence that there is a direct link between how fast these youth populations grow and what's happening to, to youth unemployment. Now I should say there's a lot of good news in there actually because if we think that uh, rapidly growing youth populations are a challenge to youth unemployment and we, uh, we show evidence that, that it is to some degree, um, most, most places are improving in that regard. That is the, the growth rate of youth population is declining, even in sub-Saharan Africa it's declining. And so uh, that should be a source of some uh, good news in terms of employment and poverty reduction uh, going forward. But it also suggests that there will be even further benefits if, uh, for example, if fertility were to decline faster in sub-Saharan Africa, then with some delay, this would show up as a slower growth of the youth population uh, some decades to come. So one of the main conclusions of our work is that uh, we do think there is a link between the youth demography and youth employment, mm -hmm. uh, between youth bulges and youth employment. Um, it's not an enormous link. We don't think it's the most important component of youth unemployment by any means. Um, and it doesn't really explain, if you said, why do some countries have higher youth unemployment than others in the current period? Um, differences in youth demography are, are not the most important component. Um, I would put much bigger emphasis on labor market flexibility, good education systems, and so on. So we don't want to overstate the, the demographic component of youth uh, employment. Nonetheless, we think we have managed to show uh, that there is a relationship. Um, it's statistically fairly, uh, fairly substantial. Uh, and it does suggest that when youth populations are growing faster, uh, youth unemployment uh, tends to uh, increase. Um, we think that's important in understanding the experience of the last 20 or 30 years just looking backwards. So uh, many countries have benefited from the fact that their youth populations have have slowed down. They grew very fast in the 70s and 80s and they've been, uh, they've been slowing down and now the absolute numbers are even declining. That's important to understand what's been happening to, to youth unemployment in these countries. Um, and we think it's important looking forward because uh, especially Sub-Saharan Africa is going to continue to have high growth of uh, the youth population. And we think it's important for governments to think about that and plan and how are they going to be able to absorb uh, these young people. Now in thinking about that, uh, as I said, in the next 20 years uh, Sub-Saharan Africa is going to need over a million jobs a month to uh, to keep the employment rates at the current levels. Um, there's nothing that can be done about that. Those people are already born. That's going to happen. So uh, that's a challenge that needs to be met. Um, and it's going to need to be met through education, through having flexible labor markets, or having good economic policy, all the things that are good for, uh, for economies uh, to do. Well, I think these results are uh, of general interest, um, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, in, in understanding uh, what the demography looks like uh, going forward and what these challenges look like. Um, the, uh, the youth population is going to grow, continue to grow uh, for the next 20, 30 years. Um, 
even if fertility declines fairly fast, there's still going to be a period of rapid growth of the youth labor force. So we think it's important for, uh, for labor ministries, for finance ministries to understand that. I think they do understand that. Um, it is in some sense the, the flip side of the demographic dividend in the sense that we think about the good thing of populations becoming more concentrated in the working age population as being a good thing, uh, moving away from, from high concentrations of children to, to having a high concentration in the working ages. Um, the challenge is that if the course of those young people as they enter are unemployed, then what might have been a positive of having a high concentration in the working ages could actually become a negative of having increasing uh, youth unemployment. So that's an important challenge and I think when we talk about the demographic dividend and the advantage of having the age structure move into being more concentrated in the working ages, um, that's only beneficial if those people are productive and, and have jobs and good productive jobs. Um, we see some evidence that when that youth labor force grows faster, youth unemployment increases. So that's something to watch for. So the population, the population is going to get older in these countries no matter what. Uh, we know that's going to happen. So we just have to try to anticipate what is that going to mean uh, on the economic side. And I think there's a lot of benefits to the population uh, getting older in the first stage when it moves into the working ages. Um, but there is this downside of potentially higher uh, youth unemployment and we think uh, governments need to be thinking about that and making sure they have institutions in place, good education systems to make sure these young people are productive.